Welcome back to another video of Your Daily Scales. Now, basically, this is a series where I teach how to play uh, basically all of the scales on the piano, all the major scales for a beginning piano student. And so basically, that's what this series is. And it's also a bit of a companion series because I'm going to be teaching some really simple classical music in the future as well. And if that classical piece happens to be in one of these major keys, I'll say to come back if you don't already know how to play this major key and you don't already know the scale very well, to come back and watch one of these videos and practice on the major scale that is in that key. And so that's kind of what these videos are used for. And basically, in every video, I teach you a different scale. So let's take a look at what today's scale is. The scale we're going to be working on today is B major. And B major has an additional sharp from the previous scale that I've already reviewed on my channel, which is E major. So now we have five sharps here that we have to remember to play. We've got F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, as well as A sharp. So those are five sharps you're going to have to watch out for. And if, if you're just started out with learning how to play the piano and learning how to learn and practice scales, you should really not start off with B major. It's a bit more difficult than the first one, which is C major. But if you're just starting out, I really advise you go back and watch the video I did on on C major. I really explain it really thoroughly to show you exactly where to play every single one of your fingers, and it's really, really simple. And so once you learn how to play C major, as well as all the other ones that are in between C major and B major, you, playing B major will actually become a lot easier, because you already have a bunch of scale knowledge already. Another thing that's kind of interesting about B major is this is the scale where the fingering pattern actually starts to change. The right hand pattern is exactly the same as in all of the other scales I've already talked about, but the left hand pattern is actually is actually completely different from any of the other scales I've already reviewed. So that's another thing that makes B major a little bit more challenging from the others because the fingering pattern is more different. So if we start off here with our thumb in the right hand on B, you'll recognize this pattern if you've watched any of the other videos that I've done on the major scales. We start off here with B, and then we play D sharp, C sharp and D sharp with our second and third fingers. And then on D sharp, we cross our uh, thumb under our middle finger to play E. And then from E, we head all the way up to B, just in that order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, to remember to play all of the correct sharps, which is F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. And A sharp looks exactly the same as B flat. They are the exact same note on the keyboard. A sharp just happens to be the exact same as B flat. So if you know what a B flat is, A sharp is exactly the same. So once we get up here to B, we're going to want to head back down here to E, just like that, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, remembering to play all of the sharps. And then once we get back down here to 1 on E, we're going to want, want to cross our middle finger over to D sharp and then head back down to B. Now, the left hand pattern here on B major, uh, like I said, is where it completely changes. Before, we started on pinky, and we headed up to the fifth note of the scale, and we landed on that with our thumb. In this one here, we start off on B major scale with our fourth finger, and then we only play four notes, and then that is where we do a crossover. So like I said, we start off here on B with our four, and then we go four, three, two, one, and we land on E with our thumb. And from here, instead of crossing our middle finger over like we did before, we cross our fourth finger over, which has a much different feel, and it feels a lot different than doing the others. So B major scale is probably going to need a lot of practice, and it's going to take a while to learn. There's going to be a bit of a learning curve here for the left hand pattern, I expect, for some people. But learning it is very important to do, and practicing it is very, it really helps your skill set. So once you land here on F sharp with your fourth finger, you're going to want to go up to B with your fingers in that order, 4, 3, 2, 1, just like that. And then you're going to, going to, you're going to want to head right back down to E uh, with your fingers in that order. So that's going to be 2 on A, 3 on G sharp, 4 on F sharp. And then you're going to want to um, tuck your thumb under your fourth finger here to get back here to E. And then once you get to E, you're going to want to head right back down to B just like that, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now let me show you what B major looks like on the keyboard. Now what's going to be different about B major is not only is the fingering going to be different in the left hand, but we also now have five sharps to watch out for. So that's going to be something to remember when you're practicing on B major. But fortunately, the fingering in the right hand is the same as all the scales we've already done previously, which was E major and A major and D major and G major and C major. So all of those have the same fingering pattern in the right hand as well as B major. So that's kind of easy. So what we start on with B major is B, of course. So we start off with B, and then we head up to C sharp, to D sharp. Then we tuck our thumb under our middle finger to get to E. From here, we head up to B. Then we go back down, and remember to play that A sharp. Once we get to E, we cross our middle finger over, and then land back down on B. So of course, remember to play that A sharp. If you're not playing the A sharp, you're not going to be playing B major, so don't forget to play all the sharps. And as of right now, we have all of the black keys that are going to be played. 
So those are all the sharps that are going to be used in the song. I mean, in the scale, not the song. Those are all the, we're going to be playing all the black notes in this scale. So that's just one easy way to remember what sharps and flats are in the B major scale. Just play all the black keys. So to play the left hand of B major is where the fingering actually starts to change. Previously, we'd start the bottom of the left hand scale with our pinky, but now we're starting with our fourth finger, so that's going to be a bit different. So we start off with four on B, then we play three on C sharp, two on D sharp, one on E. We then cross our fourth finger over to play F sharp. Then from here we head up to B. Head back down, remember to play the A sharp. Chuck our thumb under, and then we head back down to B. And we land on our fourth finger instead of our thumb or our pinky like we did in some of the other scales. So now let me get the metronome out and I will play B major with both hands five times through for you guys. So that's how practicing the B major scale will work when you're practicing at practicing it at home. Now what you'd want to do is you'd want to find a nice slow consistent speed, whether that speed is 76 like I'm using on my metronome or maybe it's something even as slow as 63. It really doesn't matter as long as you find a nice consistent speed to play it at and you can play it comfortably without having to worry about that you're playing it too fast or that you don't have enough time to think about what the next note is or to remember the A sharp. Practice it at a nice slow consistent speed and then once you get good at playing it at that slow consistent speed, then slowly start bumping up the metronome speed very slowly, very gradually, maybe like every five times so you play the scale, move the metronome up a few beats per minute, and then after a while, after some practice and some time getting used to the B major scale, you will become very good at playing it. So now let me show you the contrary motion of the B major scale, which is just another way to practice the scale, and let me show you what it looks like on the sheet music, and then I'll show you what it looks like here on the piano. So now let's take a look at the contrary motion for B major. Now before, with all of the scales that we've learned so far, which were C, G, D, A, and E. When we played the contrary motion, all of our fingers would be playing at the same time, kind of like the first three notes here do. As you can see, we play thumb at the same time, second finger at the same time, and third finger at the same time. And in all the other scales, we actually play the same finger at the same time. But because the left hand pattern of B major changes, that can be all be thrown out the window, and you're going to have to learn a different fingering pattern for contrary motion of B major. However, the right hand pattern for the contrary motion of B major still stays the same as the right hand pattern for parallel motion because, as you can see, you're playing the exact same notes in the exact same order. But the left hand pattern is where it all changes and playing them together is definitely a bit of a learning curve, so that is going to be rather tricky for some of you. So playing here on B, we start off with thumb on B and then we make our way down to uh, F sharp, so we play one on B, two on A, three on G sharp, and then four on F sharp. And once we get here to four, we're going to want to tuck our thumb under to E, and then head right down to B, which is going to be one, two, three, four, in that order. And then once we get back down to B, we're going to want to head right back up to E, and then once we get to E, we're going to want to cross our thumb over to, I mean, sorry, we're, one, one, yeah. we're going to want to cross our fourth finger over our thumb to get to F sharp, and then we're going to want to head up to B. So contrary motion on the piano, like I said, the right hand is exactly the same as it was for parallel, so I'm not even going to talk about that, but the left hand is going to have a different feel. So what instead of starting on four in our left hand like we did, we would now start an octave higher on the same note that our right hand would start on, and we'd do so with a thumb in our left hand. And from there we'd play, of course we'd play B, then we would play the notes below it, so that would be A sharp with our second finger, G sharp with our third finger, F sharp with our fourth finger, we'd tuck our thumb under to E, then we'd head down to B, and then we would head back up. Once we get to E, we'd cross our fourth finger over, and then we'd get back to B. 
just like so. So that is how the left hand of the contrary motion works. It's basically, instead of starting with at the bottom, we start at the top, go down to the bottom, and then head back up. Instead of starting at the bottom, going to the top, and then heading back down. So it's just playing the same notes of the same scale with the same fingering, but just starting in a different spot, starting at the top instead of the bottom, which has a different feel. And playing hands together, which I'm about to do, also helps kind of work on your hand independence and just kind of playing different things at the same time. First time. <laughs> Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. So as you can hear, the B major in contrary motion has a much different sound as well as a different feel, which you might not be able to tell by looking at the video, but if you go and try it yourself, you'll really be able to tell that it has a much different feel than playing it hands together in parallel motion, which we've already talked about, which is where the hands go in the same direction. So basically working on contrary motion will just help you kind of become better at playing multiple things at the same time with your two hands because it has a much different feel. It feels like you're doing two separate things at once, which you kind of are. You're playing all these different notes like at the same time, but they're not the same notes. They're all different notes, even though they're all in the same scale. So it's just kind of weird instead of playing it you're playing it the opposite direction has a much different sound and a much different feel. And I think when you go to work on the contrary motion, probably for all of these, but certainly for some of these like B major, and I found also A major was a little bit trickier than some, is to pr you probably want to become quite adequate at playing the major scale in parallel motion before working on playing it in contrary motion, just so you have a better understanding of the scale, how it's supposed to sound, and how it's supposed to feel under your fingers. Now one final thing I wanted to briefly mention is finding the relative minor scale and also practicing on it for all of the major scales. Now in B major, the way you'd want to do it, just like for all of the major scales, is you'd want to find the sixth note of the major scale. So we start on B and we go up until we hit the sixth note. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, our minor is actually G sharp minor. So G sharp minor is the relative minor of B major. Now alternatively, if you don't like that method, finding the sixth note of the scale, you can also go three half steps down from the root of the scale you're in, or the key you're in. In this case, we're in B major, so we'd want to find B, go one half step down, two half steps down, three half steps down, and then that would also get us to G sharp, as you can see. So that is two ways to find the relative minor of B major. And then from there, you'd basically play all the same notes that are in B major, except starting and ending on G sharp, like so. So it has a much different sound and also a much different feel than the major scale. And it's a good idea to practice the minor scales along with the major scales so that you can relate the two and also become good at playing the minor scales because those are also used in music quite a lot. Hopefully you found this video on the daily scales to be uh, informative and helpful for you, whether you're a beginning piano student or someone who knows a little bit about how to play music and they want to become better at what they do. Scales are really helpful for all of that. It doesn't really matter what type of music you want to play or what you know, what you want to do with your musical skills, whether you just want to learn more classical pieces and play them, or compose brand new music of your own, or improvise and do play solos. Playing scales and knowing music theory like that really helps you do all of that. And so if you're watching these videos and learning and practicing on your scales every day, it's a really great help. So hopefully you found this video uh, informative and helpful. Like I said, if you want, you can go check out the rest of the video series. And also, if you want to subscribe and hit that button up there on the right hand side of the screen, make sure to do that because I'm going to have lots of cool uh, videos of really simple classical music from some of these awesome books here from the 1800s. So if that sounds cool and you want to learn how to play some really fun, simple Bach pieces, make sure to stay tuned. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.